Take two. Right, so, what's your name? How old are you? How's it going? My name's Kaya. I'm 16 and great. Great? With technology on the rise, it's getting increasingly harder to unplug from the internet and things like social media. In fact, since 1990, the percentage of houses with no internet has dropped from being at 100% to just 12% in 26 years. Even things like listening to music has changed dramatically. For example, in the late 90s, a massive 96% of people around the world listened to music using a CD. Nowadays, it's an extremely low 10% with 89% of people finding different ways to listen to their music. What, tell us a little bit about you know, what, what you're doing. Well, we're currently, I'm needing to not use technology and social media and everything for a week. Pretty much just to see how it affects me as like obviously like a teenager and a 16 year old girl and the pretty much if it makes my life better or if it makes it worse or yeah. How does it make you feel that, what, that all of this? Well I wasn't all for it to begin with because I do use social media and everything a lot in my life. I use it to like contact my friends and talk to them and everything like that so I was very against it at the start but now that I've like thought about it I'm like yeah this seems pretty interesting I hope that we do figure something out. Teenagers these days have a huge array of access to all sorts of different types of technology but how does this affect our everyday lives and how is it different from for example our parents or our teachers day? Well 93 percent of teenagers aged from 12 to 17 go on the internet or on social media every single day. That's a staggeringly high percentage. It's day two of me not having my phone or any technology and it's decent. It's actually kind of shocking how well I'm going so far, not to jinx it, but um, today pretty much um, it was it was a pretty easy day. I was not being on my phone. Um, I haven't I've been socializing more. I hung out with my mom, my brother, and then we went to my pops and then to my grands and I feel really good about it and it's been really uplifting. Being with your phone even just for one day can really make you appreciate the things around you. And studies have shown that people who are on their phone less actually form closer friendships and closer bonds with people and actually have more productive days than people who are on their phone more. I mean, the average person checks their phone 110 times a day. Me and the third member of the group, Matt, decided to go over Kai's house and help her out a little bit by playing board games with her and playing Uno and Snap and stuff like that, just to have a little bit of fun, take our mind off being bored. So let's do a little bit of an update. How are you going? Mm, it's difficult. It's, Can you elaborate on that? There's a lot of things that I use, like especially at night when it's like 8 o'clock, your friends are busy and it's dark and you can't exactly go out. You're kind of stuck being bored. So like I now have to figure out what I'm going to do in that time. From the, was it the three days that you've been doing it, do you appreciate technology a lot more? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> do you realise that it takes over your life? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, what been your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge? Boredom. Boredom? Yeah. Or is there things that you've been doing to get over that or have you just been bored? Well I've been starting like ideas for this big art thing that'll take up a lot of time so that'll be something that can help me get through that boredom. 
So we're day three. It's four days left. I think it should be. Um, <clears throat> have your views changed on whether you will succeed or not? Um, a little bit. It is really difficult. It's more difficult than I thought it would be. But um, I guess we'll just have to see and find out. Let's see and find, see and find out. out. Um, as you can see, Kai's mood and attitude towards the challenge changed. She could not do all the things she wanted to do. She couldn't socialize or scroll through Instagram or Facebook. You can start to see the effects that it's having on her daily life. She's a little bit more moody and edgy and just generally down. Because um, usually I'd call or talk to my friends or organise things through like Snapchat and all that. So now that I don't have any of those things, I don't know how to hang out with them. I get ready to start something, but then I'm like, oh, maybe I should look this up on YouTube or how to do this and all that, and it's just, yeah, I can't, so. From watching the clips back, the group and I became more interested about people who grew up in the time without phones and social media. So we decided to interview an adult born in a time where technology wasn't a thing. When you face to face back then, yeah. You did, and now don't, do you not? You sort of, when I was 20 or younger than that, you all met at one place or two places, like a pub or a nightclub or a park or places like that. Where now, people don't really do that. They sort of talk to each other via social media and then all decide to go to a place or something like that. Don't forget when I was young, didn't, you had to, if you wanted to phone somebody, you had a house phone, or you had to go to a, a phone box. That's the way you could, you could, or you went to their house. You went and knocked on their door, or, or you spoke to them after school, or and said, okay, after school we're going to meet somewhere at five o'clock. Or that's. But then mobile phones, you know, you could physically walk around with a. Massively now. Can you elaborate on that? Photos, documentation, you know, emails. Um, it speeded up everything on the building site. You know, where before, if you think about it, if you had a problem or you couldn't, say you went to site and there'd been a plumber there and it made a mistake and put something in the wrong place. Now you can physically take a picture of it, send it to the plumber, and it can be there within an hour fixing the problem. You didn't see Kaya on day five and we decided to take a little break. But when we returned on day six, Kaya started to complain about headaches and her eyes were starting to get painful. So we went to get our eyes tested. While at Specsavers, we decided to take the opportunity and talk to one of their many optometrists about how technology affects young eyes. My name is Stephanie. Um, I'm the optometrist director here. Um, and so obviously I'm an optometrist. Yeah. And um, what does your job involve? So, so for us it's about um, understanding people's eyes and their eyesight, so checking to see if they need any glasses for either distance or for reading, and then also checking the health of the eyes. Um, awesome. Um, and how, is there, like, with younger people, you see an increase of, like, um, people getting glasses coming in and getting their eyes checked through it? Is, would you blame that on technology? or? Yeah, so it's really interesting. Um, so we definitely have noticed the trend in a lot of um, younger people are having to having difficulty with their vision up close. And it's interesting that researchers actually told us that um, it, things like computer work and too much near work is actually making vision worse. We always assumed that um, eyesight was genetic yeah. um, and it came from your parents. 
but we're actually finding now that the number of uh, particularly, particularly people who are short-sighted is increasing quite rapidly and there's a direct link between the number of the number of hours we do up close with that kind of increasing prescription. That's how much, how long would you recommend to be on technology a day? Technology, it's hard because cumulatively it's very difficult to put a number to it, um, but research has found that um, you want to have a break after half an hour. And the break can be only a couple of seconds or a, a longer period, but you definitely have to have that break after half an hour where you're changing fixation from up close to something in the distance. Um, do you think that over time, mm -hmm. um, humans will eventually get used to technology, that eyes will evolve to, I guess, accept it? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting because we don't know the future, but the research at the moment is actually pointing um, to the other direction, which is that it's just going to make our eyesight a lot worse. Um, so there you have it. The effect of technology on a young person's mind. You can see how it changes your mood and your attitude, and how it gives you headaches and eye problems. You can see Kai's point of view change from positive to negative. You've seen an adult's point of view and how it affects their lives. You've seen a professional's opinion on the matter. But here's one last opinion, mine. I believe that technology is the biggest sign of our society's evolution, and I think that it's good in small doses. But don't let it control your life or change who you are. Don't let it ruin relationships or make you blind. Like the quote said, technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. Don't let it be your master.